All right, hey guys, uh, welcome to my last video um, for chemistry. Today I decided not to make a video over an exact uh, topic in chemistry. Um, so this is less relevant to your AP test and more relevant to your, to your senior year in chemistry. Um, probably the biggest part of senior year chemistry is writing lab reports. You guys will cover, depending on if you're SL or HL, you'll cover two or three more topics, but the large majority of the year will be uh, spent doing labs and writing lab reports. Uh, this year, we've probably done over probably 15 labs. Um, we've written just as many lab reports. And one thing about writing labs is whenever you write the labs, you do not get them back after you turn them in, and you do not get any... Uh, direct feedback. Mr. Thread might address your class as a whole, giving you tips, but typically that takes about a couple, I don't know, months after you start writing labs. So I decided to make this video in order to impart on you the things I've picked up about writing lab reports over the course of the year so you guys can have a head start in perhaps getting it down so you don't make Mr. Thread angry and so you can get as many points as possible on your uh, lab reports. So the first thing, and this might seem really simple, is just the heading. Uh, I know you guys have your lab report sheets from biology, maybe sophomore chemistry, and I think Mr. Thread even hands one out. Uh, but none of those sheets actually had the correct heading um, that we ended up using. So I'll just tell you guys uh, the correct heading to use right now. What you want is your name, the date that the lab was finished. That's very important. So not like the date it was due or the day that you're writing it. You want the date that the lab was finished. The title of the lab, which either he'll give to you or if it's a design lab, you can just make up. And then the uh, title of the class, which could be IB Chemistry SL2, or maybe it could be uh, IB Chemistry uh, HL. Uh, two. So after the heading, obviously the first thing you're going to want is the introduction. Uh, and this seems pretty straightforward. Um, it's kind of, in junior year, if you guys had junior year biology, which I'm sure most of you guys had, uh, the introduction is kind of like the background um, and the introduction and biology all combined. Uh, and a lot more brief. You want an explanation of the topic, which is really going to be no more than maybe one paragraph in which you're kind of explaining the basis around what the the lab is about. So let's say you're doing the penny lab uh, in which you're um, putting pennies inside of hydrochloric acid. Uh, you're going to want to explain why you're using different years of pennies and the types of and the how the composition of pennies changed over the years. Uh, then obviously you're going to need a chemical explanation. So you're going to want to um, put all of the chemical reactions that are involved in the lab. Uh, that's a must. Um, and if that requires any further explanation in chemical terms, you're going to want to put that down too. Just to basically show Mr. Thread and the IB graders that you know what it is you're talking about and you know what's going on in the lab. You're not just follow you're not just blindly following a procedure. And then finally, you're going to want to put the normal stuff. Uh, this is pretty standard for like the same thing, stuff you, you did in biology. You're going to want to have the purpose of the lab, uh, which you might have worked into the first part. You're going to want to clearly say the independent and dependent variables. You're going to want to put a hypothesis uh, down, and you're going to want to also have what variables you intend to control and how you're going to control them. So... All right, the next thing that we're gonna, you're going to put is materials. This is obviously pretty straightforward. It's just going to be a, a numbered list, one, two, three, four. Uh, if you have a chemical, you're going to want to put the name of the chemical, the formula, and how much you used. If it's something else like a Erlenmeyer flask, you're going to want to say Erlenmeyer flask, uh, 250 milliliters. And let's say you use three because you had three trials, you're going to put three. Uh, things like that. Pipettes, maybe use 10, so you're going to put 10, uh, and so on and so forth. 
and really there, just put everything that you um, used uh, in order to conduct the lab. And then the method, uh, the method, unlike some of the other labs that you've written, maybe in biology or other classes, uh, the method is not going to be in a one, two, three, four type of format. Uh, it's going to be in a paragraph format. Uh, and it's going to be, so don't be afraid to use things like first, then, finally, and make sure you're using uh, the third person passive um, tense. And then really it's pretty straightforward. Just make sure you don't make a block of text in which you're saying what you did. Make sure to break it up in logical paragraphs. Like let's say if you're doing a titration, maybe one paragraph can be about the preparation of the solutions. Um, then the next can be about the titration itself and so on and so forth. Um, so just make it easy to read and make it clear the steps that you uh, did to, that you took to carry out the lab. Then your next section is gonna be raw data and that's just the data that you collected, um, which is gonna be your dependent variable. And in a lot of these labs, you're gonna to have to take that data and manipulate it to get your final result, but that's gonna happen in data processing later. So you're just gonna to wanna to put the, the data that you collected into tables with a title, and underneath that, you're gonna need a brief explanation of what the table is. So just say something like table one, uh, right underneath it and blah, 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 and then continue that for all your tables um, in your report. And then you might have graphs in your raw data section, uh, probably in like the very, uh, the very, very simple labs, you might have a graph in your raw data. Uh, in most cases, you'll have your graphs in your data processing section. Uh, and that's where you're going to put all of your calculations. So that's when you're really going to, I guess, like analyze your, uh, your data. You're going to calculate the average standard deviation. Uh, you're going to put into large graphs, make sure that they're big enough with proper titles axis labeled, I mean, all of that's pretty rudimentary stuff. Uh, for calculations, I suggest that you do a brief explanation of the calculation. That doesn't mean writing out in paragraph form every single step of the calculation, like then this was divided by two and multiplied by the concentration of acid, um, things like that. It's just why, just a brief explanation of why you're carrying out this calculation to get from the data you collected into whatever data you need. Um, and then, so you don't have to show every single calculation that you do. I suggest that you do sample calculations uh, for each calculation that you do, in which you show out basically your work for one or two of the samples that you calculated the data for. And then you have a table with all of the calculated results and then obviously the graphs. And then a uh, really important part of your data processing section is the percent error. Um, and that's just comparing the results you got to perhaps a theoretical or literature value that you should have got uh, based on maybe other calculations that you did. Um, and the percent error is gonna be very important in the next two sections, the conclusion and the evaluation. So in the conclusion, you're going to want to restate your hypothesis and then based on the results that you got in the data processing, you're going to want to either confirm it or deny it. Uh, basically say like the results confirmed our hypothesis or they uh, proved our hypothesis incorrect. Um, and you're going to want to, whenever you're explaining the results, you're going to want to use the data and don't be afraid to repeat like the the averages that you calculated, things like that, trends, and you're gonna to wanna to use the percent error that you calculated to maybe explain the results, um, which will also come in your evaluation. And in your evaluation, you're gonna basically say, based on the results and the percent error, you're gonna be assessing the size uh, of the error and what caused it. So, here. Sorry about that. All right, so obviously if your source of error is large, you're gonna wanna address that and, um, and come up with some pretty large source of error to really explain why your, your percent error was so large. So you're gonna suggest a different source of error. Uh, and, this, and this next part's really crucial. You wanna explain how the source of error would have swayed your result. 
because if you if your results were way too high and you suggest source of error that theoretically would have caused your your results to be much lower than expected then that's not really um that's not really helping you there because it's kind of contradicting uh what your results actually were so it's not really explaining why your results were the way that they are so you want to make sure to explain how the source of error could have contributed to the results that you got. And then you're going to also want to explain the relative magnitude of the effect. If you have a source of error that could have thrown off an amount of a chemical by 0.1 milliliters and you're using 200 milliliters, it's not going to be that big of an effect. But if it could have affected 0.1 milliliters and you're using 0.3 milliliters, then that's 33% of the chemical and obviously that's going to be a huge that's going to have a huge effect on your results. Then you're going to want to suggest improvements directly based on the source of error. Um, and these are improvements that you can carry out in the lab obviously. And then at the end I just like to suggest kind of like another possible investigation that could be carried out. Like one of my labs was testing the temperature of solutions on the voltage of galvanic cells. So my other possible investigation was just um, the effect of temperature on the power and the life of batteries. Really here you're just kind of using your, uh, you just want to be creative uh, be, and be smart at the same time. So that's basically all I have to say about the, um, about the labs. It will take kind of a, it it took a lot of guesswork trying to get them right um, and you want to get them right as soon as possible uh, so you can get the best grade possible and just so uh, you really nail the the correct procedure for lot, writing lab reports because you're probably going to be doing a lot more of it uh, in college so I hope this I hope this helps you next year uh, and that is about all I have to tell you thank you